Hello there. Hey, everybody. It's James Arnold Taylor with the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Let's bring in Mr. Announcer Guy right off the bat, trying something different. Usually, I ramble on for about 10 minutes, and then he introduces the show. I'm going to try it different today. And, and Hank's shaking his head no at me. What? 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 You're not going to be able to do it. What do you mean I'm not going to be able to do it? You're not going to be able to just have Mr. Announcer Guy come in and do the show and all that and then introduce the show and then just go. You got to ramble and ramble and ramble. Well, you're not helping with your rambling right now. Well, it's not my problem, man. That's yours. It's your show. (laughs) Okay. But you're the one doing the rambling, saying that I'm going to just ramble on. And I wasn't rambling until right now. Now I'm rambling because you're making me ramble. See, that's exactly what it is. I told you, Billy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, Mr. Hank, you absolutely did. Wait, what are you guys, you guys betting on if I was going to just have Mr. Announcer Guy come in and do the show or if I was going to ramble for 10 minutes? Well, uh, actually, I'm sorry, Mr. James, but yes, I was. I, I was betting against you, and so, you know, Mr. Hank, he won. Well, but I mean, wait a second. It's only, we're only like a minute into the show. So who's saying that I'm rambling before having Mr. Announcer Guy? And I was saying, let's get bring in Mr. Announcer Guy and have him come in. Yeah, but you still haven't done it. Well, it's, it's because you guys are now placing bets on whether or not I would do it. And Billy, I expected more. Billy, come on. Well, uh, I'm very sorry, Mr. James, but it's true. It's true. It's very true. <laughs> okay. All right. So you didn't think I could do it, Billy? Well, I, 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 I think that you enjoy talking and doing voices and you like doing that and you want to make sure that everybody's happy and they hear little voices and they hear people like me because, they, you know, a lot of people really like the character of Billy. That's true. People really like you. You're a good character, Billy. People enjoy you. You're a good, a good person. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. James. And so then I, I figured that maybe you would have all of us come in and talk and everything before you say, hey, Mr. Renouncer Guy. And Mr. Renouncer Guy comes in and says, James, James. <laughs> okay. Well, you're rambling now, and I think you're trying to do it so you can get more. How much was the bet? Well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to toots my own horn. You don't want to toots your own horn? That doesn't even make sense. How much were you betting? Well, he was, he was, yeah. Oh, Mr. Hank was betting all the Clone Wars DVDs out there. Those are my DVDs. Yeah, I know, but I really enjoy the Clone Wars DVDs, and I want to see it. I mean, I can watch it on the Disney Plus and stuff and all that, but but I like having the DVDs with all the extras and stuff. Yes, but but Hank can't bet my DVDs for you. Those are mine. I mean, look, Billy, if you want to borrow my Clone Wars DVDs, you can borrow them and watch the Clone Wars anytime you want. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. James, sir, yes. Just James? Master Obi-Wan James, sir. Okay, that's fine. You can call me that. Okay. Hank, stop betting my things. Whatever, man. You know, you lost anyways. It's all good. Because now, now you've been rambling even longer and you still haven't said, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy, come on in. And he hasn't done it. Okay, I'm going to stop both of you right now. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy! He's not coming in. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy! Well, usually by now he's like, yes, James. What's going on? He bet do. Oh, come on! You guys. Oh, so what? He's not coming. He's not coming until the five minute mark. I already bet him. You know, I gave him that. What did you give him for that? I gave him your Ninja Turtles thing. Don't give him my Ninja Turtles with that statue of Leonardo. You know, that's a very special statue. So here in the James Arnold Taylor studio, I have all the memorabilia from all the years of things that I've, you know, 30 plus years of working in showbiz. And, (laughs) and Hank is just giving it all away. Yeah, I gave you sneakers from Celebration uh, to Jerry the Music Man because he's not supposed to play the music until uh, after that too. Okay. All right. First off, hey, Jerry the Music Man. Now, he's not saying anything. Well, okay, look, Mr. Announcer Guy, Jerry, I know you all can hear me out there. You're not getting my stuff, okay? So just just forget it. Everybody's working against me on this show today. I can't believe it. This is how it works. Hank has turned all my characters against me, you know. And Mr. Announcer Guy, come on. Yes, James, I'm sorry. I couldn't do it to you any longer. Yeah, now come on, man. Yeah, man, sorry, dude. Okay. I was all ready to introduce the show, just get started, and just go this time. Because everybody's always like, oh, you go on for so long before you do the show. And I don't think the audience minds, but you guys give me a bad time about it. Yeah, dude. All right, so just introduce the show. And then, Hank's still shaking his head. Not doing it. He's not going to do it yet. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. I think he will. And if he doesn't, I'll do it for him. I do a pretty good Mr. Announcer Guy impression. Yeah, let's hear that. Yeah, man, I want to hear that. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Talking to myself, the Jetcast. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, dude, it is good. Now, here he is, the same guy that's doing all the voices you're hearing, including this one, Mr. Announcer Guy, James Arnold Taylor! Pretty good. You didn't see that coming, did ya? No, dude, you totally fooled me. All right, Mr. Announcer Guy, are you going to go now? Yes, I'm going to go now. Okay. Oh, and Hank... Don't you feel a fool? Not really. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody. Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. I do, see, I do some pretty good impressions of the characters that I do. (laughs) That's the joke. The thing is, is it's all me anyways. It's me in my little padded room, which is not that little. It's actually pretty big. Because I've rebuilt, I've I've built a new studio. And let's all have some water, by the way. Welcome to the show. Oh, that is some good water. That's good water. Are you drinking water? Make sure you have some water. Make sure you breathe. It's time for the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Now, today's episode is not going to be as long. Why? Well, because this week I have a lot of stuff going on. And I'm I'm going to be spending a lot of my time at a convention. Not the type of convention that you guys are used to me being at. Not one where I would be signing autographs or being a celebrity. But one where I'm just somebody, a conventioneer, going to be a part of it and interact with people and meet people and do some uh, pitching of my film that I am making called The Comic Shop with my buddy Matthew Buds. Matthew Buds is a filmmaker, former law enforcement, and a dear, dear brother of mine and friend. He's not my actual brother, but I say he's a dear brother. I call him a dear brother because he's a close, close friend, and he's like a brother to me. And he and I wrote this script called The Comic Shop, and we are trying to get this movie made. Now, there's we've, we've shot trailers for it. We've had my buddy Joe Hogan, who is an amazing artist, who has done much of the art in my stage show and other things. Clone Wars Conversations. If you ever watch Clone Wars Conversations, he did all the artwork on Clone Wars Conversations. Joe animated a trailer for us. We did a live-action trailer as well. And we are trying to sell this movie. Get that? Well, we're trying to raise the funds to get the movie made. So we are pitching it to film companies. And this week we were going to be at a big national convention where a lot of filmmakers and such are. And we will be pitching the film to see if we can get funds to start production on our film, The Comic Shop, because it is ready to go. The script is written. We have a lot of people cast in it. Catherine Tabor, myself, my friend Matthew Buds is also going to be in it. As well as, you know, there'll be some little cameos in there, I'm sure. And we're getting some fresh-faced young people as well to act in this movie. So, we are full bore headed towards pitching this. We have meetings with people, and this is how it works. You get like five minutes to pitch. So we're going to sit at a table with these people, and we're going to have to pitch our movie and explain why they should be interested in buying this or, or you know, putting money in to help invest in this film. Now, I've chose not to do the, you know, GoFundMe, the crowdfunding thing, and I just because I feel like that's not, that's just not for me. It's just not for me. I don't, and I don't know if I could raise any money that way. I know that many of you would want to support it and be a part of it and all of that, but I feel like I like doing things the traditional way. I want to make a movie the traditional way, but I also want to make a movie, a film outside of Hollywood because I no longer live in Hollywood. I am now living in another place and I am trying to make films here and start a production company here. And so we are spending our days at this convention, which happens to be here where I live, And I am looking forward to meeting people. In fact, today we're at this convention and I got to tell you a little story here. This was very exciting to me. I got to meet one of my heroes and he is actually the pastor of the church that I go to. And you go, well, you've never met the pastor of your church. We have to understand the church I go to is a very, very big church, very big church. And he is the pastor. And, and look, I, 
I try to treat, you know, people that are in the public eye the same way I would like to be treated, which is I really try to respect their space. I don't want to get in their space. I don't need to get into their personal life. I don't need to be their best friend. I, you know, every if I if I get to meet them, I want to shake their hand. I want to thank them for their work and what they do and how they inspire me. And I want to just go and, and then I'll just I'll be out of your way. But thank you so much. God bless you. And I got to meet the pastor of my church today. And that's the funny thing is I didn't meet him at my church, <laughs> although I sit there and I watch him on my, you know, 30 feet from him when I'm watching him preach. But I got to go. He was being interviewed on a radio broadcast at this convention and I got to meet him before he went on the air. And Matthew is, he's a bigger guy than me. And he, he also is just used to that. He's, he can kind of like, you know, get in there and get into the conversation and go, Hey, you know, and so he introduced us to him and that was really cool. And I got to shake his hand because this man is a great hero of mine. And I was just very grateful to shake his hand, look him in the eye and say, I support your ministry. I, I love what you do. And, and you've changed my life. You know, your, your, your preaching has changed my life. And so that was really cool. That was a, a very special, very special thing. And so I, you know, just briefly want to talk about heroes today. And do you have heroes in your life? Do you have people that are important and special to you that you uh, would like to aspire to? I, I know that I do. Like I say, most of mine are pastors and theologians and writers of that. And, and then also quite literally the apostles, like the apostle Paul or Peter or James. The book of James is one of my favorite books. And it's not just because it's my same name, <laughs> but that's true. So anyways, I was very excited to meet him. And I was like, you know, I, I said to Matt, said, you know, if if this is all we got from this whole convention, I'm good. I'm good to go. Because that was really wonderful to meet him and for him to, you know, look us in the eye and say, so who, you know, so who are you guys? What is, tell me about you. And, you know, it's like, well, what are you doing here? And why are you here? And we say, why we're here. And we're, we're pitching this movie around and we're trying to, you know, that. And it's like, well, that's so great. And, you know, we'll be praying for you. And all, that's all I need, man. So if all of you, if any of you, if if a single one of you is somebody that prays in any way, you know, say a little prayer tonight. Lord, help James, you know, help him get this movie made. Why? Because I really, I, you know, I can't wait. Pretty soon, I think we'll get to a point where we can actually make public the trailer that we did for this or a couple of both of the trailers that we did and make it public so you all can see it and you can kind of get a sense of what the movie's really about. I've, I've hinted around at what the movie is about here and it's about five kids waiting outside of a comic book shop for to meet their favorite voice actor and so you know you can take a guess who i'm going to get to play the voice actor of course that's right nolan north no i can't <laughs> oh i could i could i could get nolan north and it would be pretty special wouldn't it because nolan's a buddy of mine we were in the teenage mutant ninja turtles movie tmnt that came out in 07 together but no i'm actually going to play the voice actor I, there's there you go i gave it away but <laughs> And there's a, it's a it's a really fun story. It's a sweet story. It's about young people and lives, but it's also about old folks like me and how we all relate to each other and about community and building community and building friendships and building accountability and being able to share our our stories with each other. That's really ultimately what the movie is about. And I think that that's needed right now. It's a fun, funny, comedy, dramedy, you know, coming of age movie that I hope a lot of you will really enjoy, support, and build up. And, you know, maybe it becomes a, one of them cult classics. That'd be fun. To me, To me, that would be like the greatest thing. I don't expect this movie to get into a bunch of movie theaters and all of that. We plan to make it for very little money, you know, way less than a million dollars, way, way less than a million dollars. Did I mention way, way less than a million dollars? So we plan to make it for a very small amount of money and make it special and really make it neat and and that's also where you know once we get into the part that we call post production so you have pre production where she's where we're at right now which is before we've started production shooting the movie we're in pre production then you shoot the movie you're in production and then when you finish it you go into post production where you do all of the special effects and the graphics and the you know the the fine tuning with sound and and story and creating and editing and all of that and I love that aspect of things so when we get into that mode that's when we're really going to open the, the, 
the doors to all of you coming in and sending us, you know, art and stuff that we can put in there. Although, you know, I, I, I say that, but actually some of the art will need to be put in in pre-production too. So once we get, once we get funding, let me just say that if we can get funding for this movie, then I'll be talking a lot about it on this and we'll probably do some special episodes of the podcast and I'll have Matt Buds on here, who's my partner in this, and he and I will talk about it and we'll try to get you all excited about this movie because wouldn't you like to be able to be flipping through your little streaming services right now and see a movie that says, you know, five kids wait in line at a comic book store to meet their favorite voice actor. Wouldn't you be like, oh, that sounds like a cool movie. I want to, I want to get involved in that. I want to watch that movie. And that's really all I can hope for. Why? Because nowadays there's so little to watch that is fun and inspiring. And I just want to make something that I can watch and be inspired by. <laughs> you know, So the plan is uh, to start making some films like that. And not just this one. We actually have several other movies and other scripts that we're working on right now and writing. And it's very exciting. It's fun. I hope that, you know, five years from now, the world is in a much different place. That's a whole other story for another time. But I hope that five years from now, there's at least three to five movies that I've made that you all can be like, ah, that's so fun and it's good. And uh, James Arnold Taylor, Matthew Buds, Catherine Tabor, whatever, you know, film made by all these people. And that's the hope. So if you're, if you're one that says prayers, say a prayer for me today, huh? Say a prayer for all of us that we get to make this movie and that uh, it gets to be something that gets out there and the people see and you all get to be inspired and enjoy it and have fun with it. That's that's where I'm at. So this week's show is going to be shorter because I don't have as much time. So I need to record this and edit it. And I'll be honest with you. I recorded a whole other episode that was like about an hour, uh, just, a, just a little bit ago. And I went, this is too much. It's too much. So maybe I'll put it out at another time. But I got very deep into my talk about my faith and I deep into talk about stuff that, you know, is at my heart right now for where the world is and all of that. And, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to save that episode. I'll, I'll, I'll edit it. I'll edit it down and, and put it out on another time. But for now, I just wanted to inspire you all with that. Talk about that. Talk about the hero that I got to meet today and how exciting that was. And I hope that all of you get to meet your heroes and that you are inspired by them and that they make you active in your own life and your own journey and your own adventures that you're taking. Are you being active in your journeys today? So that would be the question I would pose to you here at the James Arnold Taylor podcast. What are you actively pursuing and how are you doing it? And do you have people around you that are building you up and not pushing you down? Do you have people around you that you can be accountable to that can be honest with you too? Because here's the thing, you know, you write something like I wrote this script uh, and and Matt and I wrote this script, I should say. So the way we work it is we spend the day kind of talking about it and going through it and all that. And then that night I go and I write it all out. But we both write it. We come together and, and, and come up with the story. And you hope that you've achieved something that is really good, but you just don't know, you know, because then I can say, well, here's what I wrote, Matt. And he'll go, well, I think that sounds pretty good. And then he'll talk about stuff and I'll go, oh, that's good. Let me write that down. And, you know, we, we both are going back and forth with this and, and creating this script, right? But then you're in a bubble and you go, is this any good? So then you put it out to some people and then you get some notes and then you take that back and okay, you're going to write that. And okay, that's a good note. And then some notes you go, well, I don't know about that. And, and you, then you make it better. So are you at that point in your life where you're working on something, but you're allowing other people to come in and help and give opinion and grow and all of that to where you're growing in it, you're making something else of it, and you have something new. It's very important right now in this day and age, in this time period, to have some things that bring us some joy, okay? So please find some things that bring you joy. And, and, and remember, you know, happiness is one thing. And we can have happiness, but joy is different. Joy lives in us always, or it should, or we should try for that. So what are you doing that's bringing you joy? I have many things that bring me joy. Doing this podcast is one of the things that brings me joy. It really is. It really is because I know that I'm connecting with people. I met a young man at the convention today who came up to me and said, you know, I, I was on his bucket list. <laughs> How how amazing is that to to be on somebody's bucket list of things that of people that they wanted to meet and i thought that was very sweet and that brings me joy 
hearing that somebody would feel that way about me and my work and my what I do, that was wonderful. He's a, a talented young filmmaker himself and a lot of young filmmakers out there that we've been meeting at this convention and stuff. And that brings me joy. Again, meeting my heroes brings me joy. Cooking a good meal for my family brings me joy. Hanging out with my family, talking to my wife and my daughter brings me great joy. Talking to my friends and my family brings me great joy. Now, all this technology and all this doesn't bring me as much joy. Look, in my perfect world, we turn this all off. I think they should, I think we need to have like national turn it off day. Don't you? Why do we not have national turn it off day and go out and, you know, Walk in the grass. I, makes sense to me. I don't know. But that's just me. Uh, that's me in a nutshell, baby. That's me. Help, I'm in a nutshell. It's crazy. All right, sorry. A little Austin Powers for all of you that are over the age of, what would that be, like 38, 40? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, it's fun. See, voices bring me joy. Of course, voices bring me joy. If I had my way, I would talk like Lieutenant Beck from Rise of the Resistance all the time. Isn't that a wonderful voice? Yes. I, I love that. So many different things bring you joy, should bring you joy. Make a list. Make a list of things that are joyful to you that bring you joy. Because what that does is that makes you think of them. And then in so doing, then you're happier. Because I know that there's a lot of sadness. There's a lot of heavy stuff going on in the world right now. And that's just, I, it makes me sad. So I pray for everybody. I do. I do. That's what I do. Because what else can I do, right? Well, I can do this. I can do the podcast. I can talk to people. I can interact with people. And so can you. And we can, we can be humane together, right? So find something that brings you joy today. And find something that brings you joy throughout the week. And do stuff that is fun and do stuff that is enlightening and do stuff that makes you think more, okay? Remember the old saying here at the James Arnold Taylor Podcast, know more than you want to know and know what you believe and why you believe it, okay? Very important. I repeat myself a lot on this show, but I do that because I think that sometimes that's the best way we can learn. So when I repeat myself, I'm saying it not just to you, but to myself as well to remember these things. So we breathe. <sighs> we relax, we expand the diaphragm. You know, there's, I use this thing, it's called a breather fit. And it, look it up online, Google breather fit. And it's this little plastic device. And I'll talk about it more at some point, or maybe I'll do an Instagram video or a YouTube video on it. It's a little device I use, and it really helps for building the diaphragm and breathing from your diaphragm and lower, you know, from your stomach and so off, not just from the chest. Very important stuff. And, and breathing right, <laughs> learning all that, brings me joy. Why? Because it allows me to do my job that much better. Because I love doing the voices. I love doing my job. I love doing the podcast. And so there you go. So your job is to find and you know, make a list of your heroes. And you can let them know some way. And here's the other thing. Make sure your heroes aren't just people in the public eye. Make sure you have some some local heroes, okay? Some heroes in your life that are friends or family or acquaintances or something. And look, you also don't have to know your heroes. Like I said, you know, I just I just met one of mine for the first time. And yet I go to a church and there's many pastors like that for me. Obviously, I have many heroes in voiceover, you know, uh, Billy West, Jess Harnell, Jim Cummings, Frank Welker, Corey Burton, Tom Kane. So many wonderful, amazing, talented people that are just my heroes. Dawes Butler, Don Messick, who I, you know, got to work with as a young man. Mel Blank, of course, June Foray, uh, Tara Strong, Gray Griffin, Nika Futterman, Cree Summer, Tress McNeil, Cass Susie, E.G. Daly. So many amazing talents. Uh, and I'm fortunate to work with them and call them friends. And so, you know, how lucky am I? Uh, film people, people I love in, in movies and stuff. I was watching, you know, I was watching last night a uh, Jerry Lewis movie. Like, you know, want to go to sleep happy. So I put on a Jerry Lewis movie. Who's Minding the Store is the name of it. It's a classic old movie. And he is so funny. He does a whole typewriter uh, thing in that. Ding. 
and he's he's mimicking typing because the woman next to him is at a typewriter typewriting you know and and of course a lot of you are like i've never even I, what is a typewriter but <laughs> very funny stuff you can probably youtube funny moments from jerry lewis movies and find jerry lewis jerry lewis was very funny and growing up jerry lewis danny k so many of these guys that just uh, i just loved bob hope i loved all these old old movies and stuff and yes they were old movies even back when i was a kid i'm not that old but I'm telling you, uh, Laurel and Hardy and Abbott and Costello and the Three Stooges. And, you know, I, I, I don't. Anyways, I loved all that stuff. It was fun. It was funny. But, d- you know, although my friend Phil Lamar, who's also one of my heroes in voice, says it best. He was interviewed once and he said, they say, who was your acting? Who was your, you know, who taught you the most in acting? And he said, Bugs Bunny. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I learned everything I needed to know about acting from Bugs Bunny, I think is what he says. And he's right. He's right. Bugs Bunny taught us all so much. And Daffy, you know, Daffy Duck, under underrated. You know, nowadays they uh, they don't like the you're despicable. But I I love now. I would like I would like I would like a trip to Europe. Woo-hoo. I love Daffy Duck. So funny. He is, uh, you know, and and Bugs is great. Don't get me wrong. I love Bugs Bunny. And Elma J. Fudd, millionaire. I own a mansion and a yacht. Again. My name is Elma J. Fudd, millionaire. I own a mansion and a yacht. Again. Now, one of my favorites, Foghorn Leghorn. I'm off on a tangent because they're, are they my heroes? Well, I don't know, but they're fun. I say, I, I say Foghorn Leghorn, son. You got to keep your eye on the ball. Ah, ball. That's it. That's a joke, son. You wouldn't know funny from a three-sided coin. I, 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 I say that's another joke, son. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so maybe that's, uh, I don't know, but I think it's funny. I like Foghorn Leghorn. I like, I like, uh, I'm a chicken hawk and you're my chicken. The Henry the Hawk? Henry the Chicken Hawk? Nope. You're my chicken. He is a funny guy. He, you, come on. That's, I feel like Jerry Lewis now. Come on, that's a, he's a funny guy. Uh, no, I mean, uh, Snagglepuss, heavens to Murgatroyd. Exit stage left even. Very funny, very, very funny characters and uh, heroes and bring me joy. They bring me joy. If I really want to laugh, like laugh out loud, there's a few things that can do it for me. And and Looney Tunes, I may have said that on the podcast before, Looney Tunes will do that for me. It really, it, I mean, you know, come on. And Marvin the Martian. Ooh, my Illudium Pew 36 explosive space modulator. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. When another one of my favorites, uh, well, Sylvester. Sylvester the Pussycat and... And, and Sylvester Jr. It's kind of like me and Billy. Oh, father. Yes, father. I'm so embarrassed to be called your son, father. Oh, it's very good, Mr. James, sir. Yeah, that, that's it. It's me and Billy. Sylvester and Sylvester Jr. That's what it is. It's very funny. It's very true. Very true. Yosemite Sam. Oh, yeah, rabbit. (laughs) I love all those. I always wanted to be some of the Looney Tunes. Never got to be any of them. Well, I mean, you know, actually, though, I got to do Wile E. Coyote in a video game once. Wile E. Coyote, super genius. Now, I am much smarter than you because I am a genius. So, yeah. And my, my good friend Eric Bowser does a wonderful job. He's the voice of pretty much all of them now, except for uh, Bob Bergen does, you know, uh, Porky Pig. I won't touch Porky Pig. Bob Bob uh, is the master of Porky, Porky Pig. That's, a, that's an, a very unique... I'm starting to stutter thinking about it, but I was going to say it's a very unique gift to be able to do do that do that properly i can't i can't do it properly the way that bob has studied for years and does it here's the annoying thing about voice acting if every time they do a new cartoon bob bergen has to re-audition for his own job how crazy is that you know i was the voice of fred flintstone for many years i'm not anymore really all that much i get asked every once in a while but it's been a while since i've done any fred flintstone but I always had to re-audition for my my own job. It's it it's very frustrating, you know, but that's the way that it works. But, you know, I'm still joyful. I love doing it all. Love doing, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi and uh, saying hello there. But uh, I love all, all of the characters that I do. I love doing all of them. Yep, I even love Johnny Test. <laughs> Working on some new characters that'll be coming out, uh, and and um, uh, looking forward to all of that. Looking forward to when people get to see and hear those. 
But, uh, you know, and still doing the the Fox uh, stuff. That brings me joy. The Simpsons coming up next on Fox. That's all that, you know, that's always brought me joy. I love doing that. So hey, let's drink some water. Let's drink some water. Huh? OK. Water brings me joy. So find what brings you joy today. That's your assignment. Make some lists, write it down. And when you're feeling down, when you're feeling troubled, all of those things, when you're just feeling a little meh, meh, funny word, that that makes me laugh, that brings me joy. Look at that list. Keep it, you know, near you. I'd say keep it on your smartphone, but I want you to turn the smartphones off. <laughs> Although, finish listening to the show before you turn them off. But no, why is this important? Well, the more you seek joy, the more you seek truth, the more you will find it. So be ready for it, okay? But have an open mind to truth and joy and what true joy is. I say that as somebody that has a deep belief in God. So that's all I'm saying. And for those of you that believe the same way I do, just know that right now it's, a, it's an important time in the world to be able to show your faith and to show the joy that you have in your faith throughout all of the trials in life, that you can be joyful through it, even in pain, even in sad times. You can have joy knowing you know the end of the story. So that's what I'm saying. And there's so much more I want to say, but I am going to cut this show short today just as a little goofy. It's just a little half hour goofy me doing some voices, me telling you what's going on this week, because again, it's been a busy week. And in fact, I may not even be able to get this out until next week because I just won't, I don't know when I can edit it. So you'll probably get this next week. And when you're listening to it, you go, yeah, it is next week. Anyways, there you go. Let's bring in Mr. Announcer Guy to close the show out. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Yes, James. Wow, you're very funny. You're very. I'm very joyful, man. That's right. Does it bring you joy to do the legal mumbo jumbo at the end of the show? Yeah, man, it's what I live for. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. All right, dude, go for it. Talking to Myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of YumiGo Inc. Recorded at Jet Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through backtracks, digital juice, production tracks, and partners in rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking to Myself, the podcast. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to me go on and on. Next time, we will have a show that is uh, probably a little better mapped out. <laughs> I just, I'll update you on what's going on with the movie. Hopefully, I'll have some good information of what's happening with my movie and uh, if I'm going to be able to make it or what we're going to do and some other stuff and some other stories I'll tell you. And we'll talk soon, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Please spread the word. Please give me a nice rating on Apple Podcast. If you can, give me a five-star rating. Please, please, I'd sure appreciate that. Also appreciate comments that you put there on YouTube and all. And anywhere you podcast, please spread the word and tell people, you know what, if you want to just hear a goofy, fun podcast of a guy going on and doing some voices and being silly and fun, listen to James Arnold Taylor's podcast. It's called Talking to Myself. And you do a little thing and you send him a link. Send him a link. That's all. You can go Go to my website, jamesarnoldtaylor.com, and see all the various things that are JAT, J-A-T, that's me. Okay, have a great one. God bless you. I'm praying for all of us. I'm praying for this crazy, crazy world right now, and I'm praying that you get some time to breathe, take it in, and find that joy. All right? God bless. Goodbye. <laughs>